Bienvenidos a todos nuevamente al canal Esta vez nos encontramos en Amacala Game Reserve Esta es una reserva natural que se encuentra preparada con sitios de carpas y hospedaje para que uno pueda tener la posibilidad de conocer y vivir la naturaleza en su máximo esplendor Estuvimos en esta carpa por como 7 6 días este, estaba muy bien preparada, tiene ducha integrada, baño integrado y estaba muy linda y muy fresca para la noche. La verdad es muy, muy, muy lindo el lugar, era todo incluido con las comidas y las bebidas, así que vos si llegabas ahí tenés que solo aprovechar la naturaleza y el día. A continuación vamos a hacer un recorrido a pie sobre la reserva. Recién habíamos llegado, entonces aprovechamos a hacer un recorrido, una caminata con dos guías, con tres guías, perdón, a través de la reserva. Ellos nos iban contando historias sobre la reserva y nos iban mostrando los animales. La verdad, muy, muy divertido. Así que los dejo y, y vayan escuchando lo que va diciendo el guía. animals go in the bush this is probably what was, it's one of the top two most dangerous animals to encounter in the bush mm. now the the main reason for that is buffaloes have a very antagonistic relationship with lions mm. during the day a buffalo has the strength the short horns and the numbers if they're in a herd mm -hmm. to kill a lion And if you do a YouTube search for buffalo killing lion, you'll find hundreds of videos of buffaloes killing lion. But as soon as it gets dark, the tables turn. Mm. The buffalo cannot see very well at night. Mm -hmm. The lion can see extremely well at night. And he uses that to his advantage to sneak up on the buffalo and to uh, you know, panic them and get one to run out of the herd. And then, thank you. Um, so, The buffalo is then bothered a lot by lions at night. So then he gets this attitude of, if I become aware of something that's dangerous to me during the day, I will seek it out and kill it. Because then tonight it can't come back and get me. So they become very aggressively defensive. Um, and uh, yeah, they will often, if they smell humans or if they smell a predator, something dangerous, they will follow that smell during the day to try and find it and eliminate it. Um, and then there's a type of buffalo that gets even a little bit more dangerous, and that's what we refer to as a Daga boy. A Daga boy is an old buffalo bull. Mm -hmm. Now, he was born into the herd. With his mum and he lived in the herd and he grew up and then he became a strong bull then he starts fighting for dominance in the herd mm -hmm. and if he's lucky he becomes a dominant bull in the herd mm -hmm. then he gets mating opportunities and he for a couple of years he has dominance and mating opportunities but then he gets older mm -hmm. and the up-and-coming young bulls are constantly challenging him for that dominance so eventually he gets pushed out he can't compete anymore with them mm -hmm. Now he's used to the safety of the herd for most of his life, but now he's pushed out on his own. Mm. And he becomes super nervous. He hides out in thick bush areas, usually river lines, mm -hmm. um, yeah, thick, dense bush. He'll just hide out there because he's super nervous. But if you come across him, he's very quick to become aggressive mm. because the same attitude as the rest, but more so. The, mm -hmm. That can be a bit of a because it's two organisms living in a symbiotic relationship. The first of those is a type of fungus. Now, fungus can't photosynthesize, it's a decomposer. So, fungus you normally find in the shade, under the leaf litter, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But Garrett is growing out in the bright sunshine. So, fungus 
breaks down material basically so what happens is the fungus's spores land on the tree and the fungus starts growing and it sends out its uh, little tentacles mycelium and hypha and it starts to break down the dead outer bark of the tree so it gets a bit of nutrition out of that but there's not much food in a dead outer bark of a tree so then the fungus allows itself to be completely covered by a highly specialized type of algae now blue green algae are some of the best photosynthesizers on the planet so the the shape you're seeing is the fungus mm -hmm. Feel free if you guys want to taste this little one. This is Portocula Afra, the pork bush. A nice sour flavor. If you like sour things, it's like sour spits. You, you, the leaf. The leaf. The leaf. The leaf. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's incredibly high in protein. Mm. It's mm. one of the, the plants that has the most protein in it. Mm. This plant is the reason that Addo, have you heard of Addo Elephant National Park just yep. up the road? Mm -hmm. Addo Elephant National Park has the highest density of elephants anywhere on the planet. And it's mostly due to this plant. Because mm. it's high in protein, but it responds positively to utilization. The more you attack it and damage it and break it, the more it grows. Mm. So oh. if you break it, each piece that you throw on the ground can form a new plant vegetative reproduction mm -hmm. and where you broke it it'll branch and form two branches so it like really responds well <laughs> now so that's very handy for addo <laughs> he's got that have you ever seen asparagus do that <laughs> so this is one of the wild asparagus this particular one is the protosparagus suavalensis one of five species of wild asparagus we get on the property um, and all of them you can chop off the new growth points to boil them and eat them just like normal asparagus. And this has got a weird growth thing, is they usually like creep through the bushes. <laughs> this one got excited. <laughs> okay, go for it, Dad. So this is called pig's ear. Oh, there's a feather off of a guinea fowl. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh. All the little spots on it. You're welcome to keep it. Don't mind people taking feathers from the bush because it's made of keratin. It's one of the few things that doesn't go back into the soil. Like calcium, like bones, we don't like people to take because animals chew on bones like rodents and porcupines and tortoises and giraffes eat bones to get calcium, but uh, feathers don't add anything really. Looks about the right side, eh? Looks like the track of a black rhino going that way. Well, you see the front toe, side toe, side toe in there. It's a little bit old, it's got some debris. Yeah, yeah. 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 You think it's going to digest keratin. And then as they live there, they poop out those tubes. They take their own poo and they make a tube which they live in. A house of poo. <laughs> Lovely. It protects them from the sun, it protects them from birds seeing them. Then they'll live in the poo tube for a while, feed, 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 and then pupate and emerge as an adult wasp. Uh, no, <laughs> moth. And then flower find a mate and the whole cycle continues. Yeah. Normally there'd always be water in the river. Uh, we've had a drought for about nine years now. Bueno, ya estamos llegando al final del video. Les agradezco a todos los que llegaron hasta acá viendo el video. Y si quieren dejar un like o algún comentario, y si pueden, se pueden suscribir. Muchas gracias por todos. Y en el próximo video voy a estar subiendo más sobre los safaris.